That is so weird. Look at the underside of that belly. That isn't a Wallace flying frog. No. This is... <gasps> Whoa! Just jump. I'm Jack Randall. Oh, bum! See that? That was crazy cool. I'm finding every animal on the planet. Whoa. I'm in the wild. I think it's down here. Whoa, Up close and personal. And a massive snake! OK, there's a scorpion on my arm. This is just remarkable. Look at that. Reticulated bifin in the water. Come on, let's go. The Wallace Flying Frog, named after a famous naturalist called Alfred Russell Wallace. He came through this area surveying the habitat and he found that one frog and he thought it was remarkable the way it could fly from tree to tree. If I want to find the frog that inspired Wallace to share his own name. So the question tonight is, where's Wallace? Oh, I hear it. The Wallace frog. There you are. I think we're in the right direction. Right, this is the first night on my mission to find the Wallace flying frog. They know they're here. Ah, frog. He's just sleeping there. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, wow, okay. That is so weird. Look at the underside of that belly. That isn't a Wallace flying frog. No, this is... <gasps> Whoa! Just jump. Okay, so I can tell this isn't a Wallace. A Wallace would have yellow kind of flaps here. This one's got dark blue flaps, and so that slight change means that it's a different species. Just shows the diversity of animals around here, that actually very little minute changes allows them to live in a slightly different niche. In this case, it's gliding, but it probably lives in a different canopy structure. Well, I've heard that Wallace flying frog can glide up to 50 feet. Let's see what you can do. Right, I'm pretty sure I'm in the area of the Wallace flying frog. I've been hearing it ribbit. Pretty sure it's a Wallace flying frog in that stagnant piece of water there. Yes! Wow, can you believe that? This is a Wallace flying frog. Wow, that is probably the most iconic frog in the world. Look at these flaps as well. That's how they manage to glide. They don't actually fly, but they're actually gliders. And so that flap there allows them to glide from tree to tree. But most of the time, they're in the canopies, just waiting around, eating insects and gliding away from any predators. Cat snakes, tree snakes, they love frogs this side. Look at that. Hello, just give me a little wave there. You see, he takes in lots of air into this area here and just kind of exhales slowly, which allows it to make its chirp. And each frog has a different sound. Those bulging eyes allows it to see all around himself. Very cheeky little smile. In terms of evolution, the frog would have been swimming and then after that became a glider. So it came from the water upwards and then realized that gliding was a good way of avoiding predators. I really want to see exactly how far they can really glide without actually losing. But let's see if we can try and test it. Ah, well, we didn't quite see how far the Wallace Flying Frog really does jump. Went straight to the camera, really loves you. Anyway, I think it's time to say goodbye to the Wallace Flying Frog. What an unbelievably gorgeous looking frog that is. I'm gonna let him go on this tree and maybe he'll just glide off into the distance. Here we go. Whoa, just landed straight in my hand as well. Didn't want to say goodbye. 
can't believe it. I've actually managed to find a Wallace flying frog. Yes. Now, the Wallace flying frog isn't the only gliding animal out here. You've got some flying snakes, you've got flying squirrels, we've got flying geckos. It seems to be a specialization for many species to be able to avoid their predators and actually sometimes to catch their prey. 